In reality, an oscillator gradually loses its amplitude in a mechanical system. So for example, if I grab a pendulum and displace it and let go, then we know from experience that slowly but surely as it oscillates, you know, it, its amplitude becomes smaller and smaller until it eventually stops altogether. Why is that? Well, this is due to damping. And a damped oscillation is one in which there's a frictional force opposing the motion of the oscillator. So there is an external force. And this just causes energy to be removed from the system. Let's have a look at graphically what we're talking about then. So, um, well, first of all, if we were to just sort of put back our original perfect kind of undamped oscillator, well, this, that means that the amplitude remains the same all the time and just never, never changes. And um, so it's perfectly going backwards and forwards. <clears throat> well, if in a real system, then air resistance in the case of my simple pendulum here is going to gradually cause um, some kind of uh, change. So it starts off the same, but uh, you can imagine just what's going to happen. So each time it oscillates, it's losing a bit more energy and um, but it'll probably keep going a fair bit longer than I've drawn, but you can get the idea of what I mean. And um, of course, you could, we could increase that frictional force by putting on a bit more air resistance. How would we do that? Well, the, the classic way for a, a simple pendulum is just to sort of put a paper cone or something over the bulb. And then in that case, then, well, we're going to have even more radical damping, damping now. And so we're going to get something starting to dwindle down very quickly indeed. And so in a few oscillations, it might not be doing much oscillation at all, and it'll eventually stop. Well, you'll notice that in all, all those cases there, the undamped case and the two damped cases have the same frequency. Now that's not strictly uh, perfectly true, but approximately true. When a system, when an oscillator is damped, um, as long as it's lightly damped, then it, we can assume it has a very similar frequency to the perfectly free oscillator, the free oscillator which we've already described, which retains its amplitude. And that's quite important because it means in calculations in questions, we can still use those equations which we came up with in the last video for the frequency of a simple pendulum at small angles and the frequency of a mass spring system at, at, um, well, at any displacement. So the, this, these curves that I've drawn here can be described as, um, well, the first green one is totally undamped. Then, and the pink and the blue ones are what we would call lightly damped, light damping. Or another word that's often used for that is underdamped. Yeah, so lightly damped or underdamped means that they do a bunch of oscillations before coming to a, coming to a halt. And, um, and we can assume the frequency is, to all intents and purposes, the same as for the free oscillator. So we can, kind of, so we can consider damped oscillators as approximately free oscillators, as long as they're underdamped. So let's just get a definition here of damping. If an oscillator has to do work against frictional forces, then energy will be transferred away from the system. And so that's a key idea. And we're going to come back to energy in the next, um, one of the next chapters. And of course, if energy is removed, then the amplitude is going to go down, is going to decrease. Uh, the energy idea is good to use in questions, but I recommend giving a nice full description of damping. Um, you know, that would be a full description of a damping, pro damping process. Um, other systems, let's look at mass spring. Well, a mass spring, the same argument applies. It could be, if it was in a vacuum, in a perfect sort of situation, you might get quite close to an undamped system. Um, in order to damp it, it's quite common to sort of stick a piece of card on the bottom of the, the mass, would cause a good bit of damping, because it would increase the air resistance. And so that would then be lightly damped. 
You could go a step further and, for example, really put some heavy damping on. So one example there might be to, you know, stick it in a beaker of oil. Suppose we did that. Suppose we stuck it in a beaker of treacle. So here it is. Well, you can kind of imagine this time that if you displace that mass on the spring in treacle, that it just would kind of go down amazingly slowly. It probably wouldn't even oscillate at all. It probably wouldn't complete a one oscillation. It would probably do something like very, very slowly make its way towards the equilibrium and eventually get there sort of after an hour or whatever tomorrow. Well, that's an example of what's called overdamping. And, um, and some systems uh, use that in, to avoid the unwanted consequences of oscillations in everyday life. But again, that's something we'll come to a bit more in the next section. Um, and it's just worth knowing, although you don't need to know the, the actual definition, that there's an, another kind of damping where the damping friction is just designed so that it gets to equilibrium in the quickest possible time without overshooting. So you can imagine, you know, if this is treacle, we could kind of keep using liquids of less and less vis viscosity until the mass kind of just went to equilibrium in the quickest possible time that we could manage to get it without going beyond. Well, that case, um, if I can find another colour to use, <laughs> let's use red, that's called, that's actually got a name, critical damping. So it's good, good kind of general knowledge um, to, to know what, what that is. But again, you don't have to learn that definition. So it's one that they'd, you know, would crop up in a, in a question and be explained if you had to use that idea. Um, good. OK, last thing just to write down here is the fact that um, damping forces always oppose the motion. So it's kind of obvious when you think about it, like any frictional force. And um, that's sometimes tested in exams as well. So we've looked at free oscillations, we've looked at damped oscillations, let's look at what's meant by forced oscillations. Well, a forced oscillation is just occurs when an oscillator is driven by a, a driving force. And if that's a periodic driving force, then it's a forced oscillator. In other words, if there's some force continually pushing or pulling on an oscillator, then it's considered a forced oscillator. Classic example is something we've all done, pushing a kid on a swing, pushing someone on a swing. Well, the, the kid on the swing is an oscillator, but because we keep giving a push, then we're providing a periodic driving, driving force. And so it becomes a forced oscillator. If you just did it once, push once and walk away, well, you would be, that would be like a free oscillator then, because it would just be left alone to do what it wants to do, or it'd be damped as well, because it would slow, gradually slow down. But, um, but as it is, it, with a periodic driving force, it's a forced oscillator. Another example that you might see in, the, in a, a physics laboratory, is getting a vibrator, connecting it to a signal generator, which causes the um, vibrator to oscillate up and down. And that's connected to a mass spring system. So that becomes a forced oscillator because you've got an oscillator being driven by a periodic force. Some examples are a bit less obvious. For example, someone walking across a suspension bridge if it's one of those old kind of rickety type sus suspension bridge, footbridge across a river or something, then, well, you'll know that they kind of wobble. And if you walk across one, then you're providing a periodic driving force. And therefore the bridge, the suspension bridge, becomes a forced oscillator. And so anything, anything that is continually pushed or pulled by a, a force, periodic force means regular force, then um, it's a, a, forced a forced oscillation or a forced vibration. Now, what gets quite interesting is what we're going to cover in the next section, because very often oscillators are forced, but also damped. A child on a swing is a good example, and the mass spring example is a good example. And when those two things interact, you can end up with some quite interesting um, phenomena. Um, so that's what's coming up next. But first of all, just try the, the multiple choice challenge um, that comes up after this video.